Although as Minister of National Defense, um, I had sighting reports uh, of UFOs. Uh, I was too busy to be concerned about them at the time because I was trying to unify the Army, Navy and Air Force into a single Canadian Defense Force. And that itself was a kind of uh, battle to the finish. So um, this was not high on my agenda. But it, about 10 years ago, I started getting interested uh, due to a young man from Ottawa sending me material on the subject. I told him I was too busy to read it, but he had confidence that someday I would. It took me a while to get around to reading it, but I took it uh, for my summer reading in 2005 and um, was really impressed with what was contained in it. And what I thought to myself is there are huge issues here, huge issues. And the American people and the people of the world have a right to know what's going on because they're part of it. It's not just an isolated thing. I accept the invitation of Victor Vigiani, uh, who's over here somewhere, and his uh, cohort, uh, Mike Bird, to speak to a symposium at the University of Toronto. And uh, I said, UFOs are as real as the airplanes flying overhead. That gave me the dubious distinction of being the first person of cabinet rank in the G8 group of company, countries uh, to say so unequivocally. In the 1960s sometime, there was a flotilla of UFOs headed south that crossed into NATO territory in Europe. And um, the commander-in-chief of uh, the Supreme Allied, Allied uh, Headquarters in Europe uh, was naturally very shaken. Uh, fortunately, or maybe divine providence, before um, the panic button was pushed, the flotilla turned around and headed back north. Uh, obviously they had thought maybe they were Russian and they were very concerned about it. Anyway, a, uh, <clears throat> an investigation was launched into this whole subject and uh, a document was prepared which uh, concluded that at least four species had been visiting Earth for thousands of years. And this is my own uh, view at this stage as well. So, except for that, there are just a couple of um, things that we've talked about that I'd like to refer to. And one uh, was that we were referring to them as they until this morning when Linda Moulton Howe, I think she was the first one, actually named three different species. There is one hadith that is very fascinating and it is an authentic hadith. Our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, al jinnu thalatha. Jinns are of three types. One type, lahum ajniha. Yatiruna fil hawa. One type, they have wings and they fly and they roam around in the air. They are flying around in the skies. They're living their lives and they're going by. The other type, they are hayat. There is a category of jinn that typically appears in the form of animals. And two animals in particular the jinns love to appear in. But sometimes there are other animals. And the two main animals that the jinns love to appear in are snakes and dogs. But this does not mean that they never appear in another form. They could have other forms as well. The third type of jinn is they come and they go. This is the one that seems to want to irritate us, want to frighten us, want to come into our lives. This third category. I don't think we can any more refer them to them as they because they're not an amorphous mass. They are different species and consequently may have different agendas. I don't think we can say that they all have the agenda, same agenda any more than we could say that the United States, uh, China and, uh, and Russia had the same ag agenda. Our real interests may be very similar, uh, but as of now our perceived interests are still uh, quite far apart. 
One more observation before I begin what I want to say, and that is that we spent quite a bit of time talking about the 66-year-old cadavers, and I was glad to have Linda this morning finally say that there are live ETs on Earth at this present time, and um, at least two of them probably working with the United States government. You know, Muhammad, the day when he will gather them together and say, O oh, company of jinn, you have misled many of mankind. And their allies among mankind will say, Our Lord, some of us made use of others, and we have now reached our term which you appointed for us. I, the seventh, the other species that I learned about uh, not too long ago was called the Tall Whites. And uh, this is when Paula Harris uh, broke the story just a few years ago. And through her good offices, I had the chance to talk for about three hours with former airman Charles Hall and uh, listen to this absolutely fascinating story of uh, how he was working with, first of all, he was scared out of his skin. But after that, when he got to know them, how he was working with, and finally, they became to trust each other and have a good working relationship with the tall whites at the uh, gunnery range at Indian Springs in Nevada. And these tall whites were living on United States Air Force property and working in cooperation with the United States Air Force and sharing technology. You know, Muhammad, the day when he will gather them together and say, O oh, company of jinn, you have misled many of mankind. And their allies among mankind will say, Our Lord, some of us made use of others, and we have now reached our term which you appointed for us. Returning now to the research of Michael Tassarian, the fierce galactic war that raged in our solar system some 50,000 years ago reduced a major planet beyond Mars into fragments and forced the renegade Anunnaki to seek refuge on planet Earth. However, before departing our solar system, the enemies of the Anunnaki cautiously placed an energy grid around the Earth to keep them quarantined here forever. And we have sought to reach the heaven, but found it filled with powerful guards and burning flames. And we used to sit therein in positions for hearing, but whoever listens now will find a burning flame lying in wait for him. And we do not know, therefore, whether evil is intended for those on Earth, or whether their Lord intends for them a right course. And among us are the righteous, and among us are others not so. We were of divided ways. And we have become certain that we will never cause failure to Allah upon earth, nor can we escape him by flight. Because jinns could fly, see, and jinns could go to, through, through many of the heavens, they could go up, up and down. They didn't have to stay on the earth. They didn't have to stay on the earth. They could travel up. It was only when Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi came that they were that they were trapped within this first universe. This is clear from the Quran. This in Surah Safat you will find this. In Surah Jinn you will find this. That Allah did not allow them to go beyond the first heaven or the first heaven, meaning the end of this universe. They can't go past that after the after Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi became a prophet. But before that, they could go above that. And the jinn race we had created before, before Adam. And they lived on earth for 2,000 years. The jinn in these 2,000 years, the jinn are not the smartest. Allah gave the jinn a lot of strength, and Allah gave them a lot of powers, and they could do many things. And the jinn were living on this earth before Adam salam. And there were nations, and there were tribes, and they were living, and they were getting married, and there was descendants and so forth. But they were so corrupt on earth. They caused so much corruption. They killed each other, deceived each other, cheated on each other, took uh, took the rights from each other. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent an army of the angels to fight them. And this army of the angels fought them and pushed them out of the land and made them live on the islands of the sea. 